So the first area that I would like us to cover, or also just to remember, uh, we are going to use or rely on standard methods or measurements as rules to pro, uh, that is going to guide our estimation. It's worth noting that you consider that as well. So if you want to do uh, estimation for a septic tank, then what you need to consider quite fast are the excavations. Now excavations, uh, when you need to know, it's in cubic meters, that is the unit. Okay, so the quantity that we are looking for is in cubic meters. Our calculations, we'll do them on the side here. All right. So the first excavation, let's see what you have in total. Uh, so this is uh, D, and we also have other sections of it. So what happens, the reason why uh, septic tank in most cases, you are being given uh, the letters here, it's because... The design can be constant, but then depending on the capacity of, uh, of the septic tank you are dealing with, you can always choose or pick the length to adopt. Like in this case, we have two options here, option A, all right? We have option A and option B. So option A, you notice it's smaller because you can see the number of persons is 10, while option B, the number of persons is uh, 20. Therefore, the dimensions for that is different. I would like us to take option B of a 20 persons capacity of the septic tank. So that means our D in terms of the length is going to be 3.6, 3.6 meters. So that is what we are going, we are going to use. Once that is noted, then for us to get the uh, excavation volume now, of course, we'll get the length as usual. Uh, the width as well. You can see the width has been indicated. Uh, let me just uh, do away with. Um, let me do away with all those highlights, so that our um, our drawing is uh, clearer. All right. So we have that. So we've seen this. The D is three point six. So what we'll do next is. Uh, is getting the excavation. So you can always do this excavation depending on the sections because you realize that uh, we have manholes on either side. So inlet manhole one and also another outlet manhole. So, but then the, those two sections, they are of not, they are not of the same depth as the other one. So you can do it in two ways. So option one, take the entire, the first bigger portion Okay, the portion that has the dimensions F1 and F2. So consider that first, and then you consider the manholes separately. That is uh, the best or the preferred way of looking at this. So on the main section, the main section we've seen D is 3.6, okay? So starting from this end, we'll take, uh, we'll take... So looking at uh, the section, you notice there is a stretch. There is an extension here, which uh, we'll have to measure because it's not indicated. We'll have to measure for the slab so that we know what it is. So that one is around uh, one. We'll do, let me just zoom it in well so that I can read it properly. So we'll take 165 as an extension that side. And also, uh, let's also see this one here. Uh, this is also, uh, this other side will take 230. Yeah, they don't seem to be uniform. So we'll just read and adopt what is here. So we'll take on the first stretch is, uh, so what we can do here, we get the length. The length of the septic tank for the main portion for the excavation. So it's equal to, so we have 165. I can say 0 0.165. Then we add to uh, 0 0.2 is the wall. Okay, this part here. And then now uh, we've uh, read D to be 3.6 according to this provision. These are 3.6, so we add uh, 3.6 there, and we also add another 0 0.2 for this, 
and the stretch or uh, the external spread on this particular portion. So we add um, 0 0.2 and we also add 0 0.23, okay? So that gives us the total length of the main section of the septic tank for the excavation, excavation works. And then we also work on the width. Width here becomes, uh, width has been indicated. So what we have to check is it's 1.8. 1.8 is with, is within uh, within the within the walls so that is how it is uh, the 1.8 is here so we'll have to add the walls to the 1.8 so 1.8 then we add uh, 0 0.2 times 2 all right so what you also need to take uh, keen attention on is that there is no section of this uh, from uh, that is cutting this way provided. So what we need to do is to give an allowance for uh, external excavations or excavations beyond the wall. Okay, so we'll have the 1.8 plus 0 0.2 times 2. Then we add, we can take uh, 0. Point, let's take the bigger one. <coughs> Uh, 0 0.23, just equivalent to what we've read in section AA. And then this, we multiply, <coughs> sorry, we multiply by 2. Okay, so we have width of that. Then the next discussion is for the depth. We get the entire depth first, and then now we'll subdivide it into the sections or into the stages according to the rule of stages of 1.5 meters deep. So the depth, total depth, let's see. You notice the septic tank is slanting, okay? Because at this end, uh, where I am, where my cursor is indicating, this portion here, you notice it's shorter than the depth of the portion that is indicated, F1, okay? So what that means is that you need to get an average at the end of the day so that you get uh, the average of the depth. So what we'll do, there is a common line here, okay, where it's indicated TWL. There is a common line there, and then there is an F2 and an F1, okay? So it's going to be an average. So what you do, F2 and F1 have not been indicated, so we go again to this table, okay? This table, we took uh, preference B, for the capacity of the septic tank. So F1 here is 1.5 meters and F2 is 1.4 meters. So for those two that have been indicated are the ones that five. So we have 1.5 plus 1.4, okay? So of course the base for the slab is uh, common. So these two are the ones we are going to get the average so we take those two, divide by two, so that we get the average for that. And then now we'll add, we'll add this, we'll add the uh, the depth for the base, uh, the base of this particular, uh, particular septic tank. And uh, as we mentioned, we adopt the plan swift to do our, to do our measurement here. So this one is, uh, uh, let me take it quite keenly. Just go back to the linear, linear dimension from here to this point. All right, so that gives us 200 in the depth of uh, the depth of the bed. So we have here uh, 0 0.2. And of course, we are going to add uh, a dimension or a thickness for the blinding, which is normally 0 0.05 for blinding. And after that, the now the dimension that is above the line, okay? Because you notice there is an existing ground level here, which includes the dimension above the line, okay? So we check if it's indicated, if not, then we'll measure. So the dimension above the line 
it doesn't seem to be here so what we'll do we'll measure it so i'll just take my linear tool up here okay from the linear tool i put it there from that line to where i need i need it up to the surface of this uh, particular slab okay let me just stretch so that you can see okay so i'll take i'll take that to be 750 okay because you can see the gl gl stands for uh, ground level so from the ground level up to the line that we had all taken is uh, equivalent to 750. And that one is common, so I'll take 0 0.75. Again, I get 2.45 in total depth of a, of a septic tank. So we already have the total depth. So what we'll need is simply to get the first stage of the excavation works. Okay, so the excavation excavation stage one so that is what we need so we get length uh, times the width and then uh, times the depth so depth we take first 1.5 because the rule mentions that you measure in stages of 1.5 so i get the first 1.5 that is what i get and also it's important to remember that for the first stage we need to add the excavations for the manholes as well okay so the manholes that we have, they are indicated here, okay? The length is 0 0.8, but then you add the 0 0.2, okay? So we'll have here uh, 0 0.8, okay? Of course, there is an allowance that we give for excavation of the septic tank at the, the main one. So that stretch should cover us for what is here so of course it's mine we'll, we'll, we'll take 200 okay from this point up to this point we less 200 and then we add the 200 so it's like minus one plus one so this remains to be 0 0.8 and then the width is 0 0.6 but then we add the wall parts eh? so it's 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 so that gives us uh, 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 times 2. So we have 1. Then onto the section where we are going to get the depth. How do we go about that? So you can see uh, we'll measure from here to here. We had actually measured and the dimension was, uh, the, the, the measurement was 0. Point. 0 0.75 0 0.75 but we need to add the 200 because the 0 0.75 is up to the top of the, uh, the the base lab for the manhole so here we do equal to 0 0.75 then we add uh, 0 0.2 for the base lab we get 0 0.95 so the stage one of the excavation here comes to be times width then times the 0 0.95 okay so stage one we have it here we get the total of that it's uh that one plus this we get 18 okay but then there is the excavation stage two okay so for the stage two we are going to now do uh the same same length then you multiply by the width then you multiply by whatever is left of this okay so what we'll do bracket this is 2.45 minus 1.5 which was done in stage one okay so that is what we get it becomes to be 11 then uh, for the manholes there is no not another stage because it's uh, just the total was 1.5 which is the total of, um, which is the entire excavation depth to be considered. So we get this is 18, while stage two is 11, all right? Okay, so all that considered, we come to, uh, we come to our, uh, our excavation volumes. So stage one, we've already done our, 
we've already done our, our volume it's 18 18 cubic meters for stage one quantity is 18 okay stage two is uh, from what we've calculated stage two gets to be I believe we do it this way so that we can uh, round up okay so this one is 19 we take 19 for stage 1 and 12 for stage 2 okay so we take this to be 19 while this one for stage 2 it's always advised that you round it up to the next uh, to the next all figure then the next item is load and cut away surplus uh, spoil all right so normally depending on the type of soil where you which you are dealing with if it's black cotton it normally compromises the st uh, structural uh, uh, structural stability of of the any structure that you build on it so it's always advisable that you cut it away so on this in this case we are assuming it uh, it's going to be a black cotton soil so we are intending to cut away all the excavated uh, materials uh, from site so we add we add the two then 